Hi guys. So, um, this is just going to be like one of those random videos that I'm going to put up on my YouTube channel. Um, basically, let me put, let me take my hair down. <laughs> my hair is all crazy. Um, basically, I wanted to do a video on just kind of reflecting on what happens when you don't listen to your intuition. What happens when your intuition is telling you something and you refuse to listen to it? Um, I feel like it's my responsibility to kind of address that situation, that, that little experience, because um, as a tarot reader, as a reader, as a spiritual advisor, I always talk to my clients about the importance of trusting your intuition, listening to your vibe, listening to um, that little voice inside of your head or your sixth sense or that feeling that you get when um, your body is telling you, telling you something, especially when it comes down to helping you answer a question or helping you just kind of figure out is this the right move for me? Is this the right decision? You know, that kind of thing. It also goes hand in hand for those of you who, um, you know, for people who say, you know, to pray on it and ask God for, for the answer. It's the same thing. I feel like God's way of talking to us is through our intuition, through our sixth sense, through our ability to physically, emotionally, spiritually just feel the answer. Okay, and also obviously through signs and whatnot. So that being said, um, my little experience with this and this lesson that I have learned, and it is a lesson that I am learning over and over and over again. <laughs> call it karma, call it my, it's like a life lesson that I have to learn, I guess, in this present life. I maybe in a past life, I lived a perfect life. I don't know. But whatever the case may be, I am always finding myself in these situations as, as far as work, career goes. That is my number one struggle in this life. Um, so my thing is, as you guys know, I had put that out there. I had put it out there like a, like a couple days ago about closing down um, my shop, The Cackling Moon for the month of August because I wanted to spend that time um, taking a break, basically taking a break from readings and stuff. And the main reason of doing this was because I have been very stressed the last few weeks. Um, some of you guys have noticed how stressed I've been. Um, my posts have reflected it. Um, and then some of you guys just, you're more aware of what's going on in my personal life because I tell you, you know, we're, we chit chat. And then, you know, I like to make myself as transparent as I can with, you know, with the respect of also respecting my own personal life. <laughs> but um, I've been really stressed, okay? So I've been really stressed the last few weeks and it's because I took on a second job. Now, when I took this second job, I took it with the intention of having a second paycheck, okay? A paycheck that was going to go straight to my savings account to help husband and I um, save up for a house, like a down payment for a house faster. Okay, that was the only intention. I'm gonna take these glasses off because it's that glare is gonna it's gonna mess with me. So you can see my eye makeup's like smeared because I was like crying earlier today. I'm a crybaby. I'm a Pisces. I'm a crybaby. So, anyways, <laughs> um, so what was I talking about? Um, the second job. I took the second job with the intention of that money that I was going to make is going to go sit in my savings account to add on to our, you know, the process of saving for a down payment for a house faster. Now, obviously, anybody with <laughs> common sense would know that if you are going for a job strictly for the money, obviously, you're going to probably hit some blocks um, either you're not going to like it or it's not going to have any emotional value to you other than just being a paycheck. And, you know, <laughs> they always say money is not, doesn't buy, money can't buy you happiness, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't do anything for money. But sometimes when you are desperate, you do it, right? I am guilty of that. I did that multiple times. 
So anyways, I took this job and it was a position that I have absolutely zero experience with. Um, I've never done the kind of work that I was doing. So I was learning something completely new. It was alien to me, right? And I am a creature of habit, but I also am a creature of adapting to change. Um, I am a mutable sign, you know, Pisces. We can totally evolve ourselves to fit our situations. Well, <laughs> um, it wasn't working for me, right? So the first week I started working there, um, it was hard. It was like I was hit with just this whole wave of like new stuff I have been working in libraries since 2002 when I was volunteering so over 10 15 years right and that's all I knew all of my experience is either retail which I did when I was like teenager years or library which is like the majority of my life <laughs> So this job that I took on was nothing like that. Um, and I thought, you know, I can evolve, I can adapt, I can do this, blah, blah, blah. It's a nice little paycheck that I'm going to get. It's perfect. And it wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't catching on. And for me to not catch on after three weeks of working at a place um, and not feeling the way, <laughs> not feeling comfortable, that was a huge red flag to me. And I was ignoring I was ignoring my intuition. My intuition was telling me this isn't a good fit. It's not a good fit. Spirit is also is, is showing me right now the image of like when you try to cram like a star shaped block into a, a circle or a square hole, it doesn't fit, right? That's the image spirit just gave me. So it's like I was forcing myself to think I'm going to make this work that I'm gonna get this. One day I'm gonna magically show up to work and everything's gonna make sense and it's just gonna fit. Because that's, you know, when you're new to a job, that's that's what happens. You get nervous, you're trying to learn something new, it's a little weird, whatever, but then eventually you get the hang of it. But I was on week three and I really, like I was asking my poor, my poor coworker, I love her and like, I feel so bad because I feel like I let her down, but I felt like I was bugging her after, after a while because I'm asking her like the same shit that I should have known, you know, and I even took notes and it was like, nothing is clicking. It's not sticking in my mind. I can't remember. <laughs> why isn't this being, why isn't this easy? This, this should be easier than what it is. Right. And so week three came and <laughs> <laughs> I finally got a paycheck right for the first week and you know that was nice it helped me feel a little bit better because it's like okay I'm seeing some money for the time that I'm putting into this but at the same time I still was feeling you know this isn't working I don't like this I really didn't like it you know it was it was it, it was just the kind of job that I, I just I couldn't see myself doing for hours and hours and hours like I couldn't see myself doing that and so, um, I don't want to like give the whole story, but like, basically I was feeling stressed. You guys, my body was starting to show me signs of this isn't the right fit. I literally on my back, I feel I, the best way I could describe it is a T the shape of a T, right? That's like the kind of pain and heaviness I was feeling on my back. I literally felt like I was carrying a backpack of just fucking pain and stress on my back. I didn't have that pain. I didn't have any of that when I first started this job. I came into this job feeling completely fine, right? My body didn't hurt. Aside from my feet hurting every once in a while when I stand for, you know, several hours at the library. But whatever, like I get over it. <sighs> but the back pain was different like it was a stress tension feeling and it literally just felt like I literally felt like there's like this like this binging this this mass like hanging off of my back right so that was one physical thing the other physical sign um, was more in my dream state. So the last four or five days, I can literally say every single night, <laughs> I dreamt about money. I dreamt about invoices. I dreamt about numbers because that's what I was doing at this job. I was doing account payables. And so um, we were paying bills for the company and it wasn't just like one or two bills. It's fucking like a list of bills. Like it's a big company. <laughs> So, um, it was a lot, it was a lot of pressure. Um, and it was like, 
you know, I didn't know anyone's really anyone's name in the office. It wasn't like a library setting where we all know each other and it's like we're a family. This workplace was more of everyone's in their own world. And I was there for three weeks and I still didn't know people's names or no one said hi to me. Like I would say hi when I would walk by people, but they wouldn't say hi to me. Like it was just like you were just a body, you know, you were just there. <laughs> you are solely just there to exist, to get shit done. And that's it. Um, and I could feel the vibes, you know, there was vibes in that place. It was like, um, stress it was anger it was frustration vibes i i remember I, I brought my black tourmaline to work i i even used my cleansing spray on myself a couple times i sprayed my chair it was just like i normally don't have to do that i really don't do that at the library like i feel so comfortable at the library i love it but this job was like something different you guys so the physical signs I was feeling was like the, the pain on my back um, and then the dreams. I was having really bad dreams for five days all about numbers and bills and invoices and just stress, right? And um, so those are my physical signs. And then what else? Um, I got anxious. <laughs> and this was more so like this last day today. Um, I felt like I was on the verge of crying. I'm nowhere near my PMS. My PMS actually starts next week. Thank God. Um, but I was feeling on the verge of crying. I was feeling panicky, like a panic, like I was going to have a panic attack. I would feel hot. I would feel suffocating like in the office. Um, and I don't know, you guys, it, it, it just, it just didn't feel like a right fit. I, I constantly felt like a little fish out of water. Um, I, I just... I didn't feel like I fit in there um, and that kind of work wasn't the kind of work that I wanted to be doing so anyway long story short I ended up leaving an hour before my shift was over um, I was only gonna be working today from 8 to 11 and then I was gonna drive on over to the library because I literally work like a <laughs> two three miles away from this other place so I was going to go to the library and then I worked at the library from 12 to 3. But it was about 10 o'clock and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, I can't. And so I, I guess, yeah, I panicked. You can call it a panic attack. You could call it freaking out. You could call it just saying I give up. <laughs> or you could just call it like I'm giving in to my vibe. This is what intuition is telling me and I don't belong here. Um, so I left and I clocked out and I just, I told the girl, I have to go. <laughs> this isn't for me. I'm sorry. I feel like I wasted your time. I'm sorry if I wasted your time. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I left and, um, and I emailed the, the, the lady, the girl that interviewed me and everything, my resignation. I just sent her an email after I talked to her and, um, and that's it right and you know the thing about this job is it was a second job right it's a second job I took for the extra money so technically it's not one of those jobs that oh my god I have to have this job to pay my rent or to feed my kids or whatever so thank god that it was that situation but it really it really made me think about all of you people, those people, some of you who are probably watching this video right now, who are in a situation, I feel like I'm gonna get emotional, who are in a situation where you have to work to feed your kids or you have to work to, to pay the bills and you have to work in order to survive. And maybe you're in a job where it's like, bullshit <laughs> or you're in a job that is just like so consuming and it's so stressful and you can't get out of it you know and you're probably watching my video thinking god well good for you but you could leave your job and you didn't have to worry about anything you know and so I feel for you people I really feel for you because I um the situation that I was feeling it was like I felt like I was climbing a wall that I couldn't jump over <laughs> but I was able I was able to get out of it, right? I was able to get out of my out of my out of my pit. 
but some of you can't do that and that is heartbreaking to me um it's heartbreaking to me Whew, i don't want to be crying because <laughs> i've cried enough today um it's heartbreaking to me because you guys there's people out there whoever's watching this or people that i know like who can't get out of your situation and i now understand completely what it feels like to work a job that you maybe you just don't feel like you fit in you don't feel like you belong maybe you agreed to a contract and you thought the job was going to be something but it wasn't and now you're stuck or some of you have situations where it's like you have to work that job because maybe you didn't go to college so you can't apply for other things like I mean there's so many different scenarios and I'm one of those people I didn't go to college so I am limited as well when I apply for jobs right but um I feel for you <laughs> and I think that that if anything if there was anything that was compelling me to make this video was to say I feel for you and I understand now and I feel like that that this lesson this experience is giving me more knowledge more um more understanding of where some of my clients are coming from when they come to me with you know a scenario like this um it really gives me another idea of what the hell that is like um my experience was only three weeks but i know now like if you don't listen to your intuition if you don't listen to your body if you are physically having signs of i am not happy i do not belong here whether it is a job or a relationship or um a house that you live in a living situation whatever if you're having those physical symptoms and you are having the, the you can't sleep you know what i mean you know what you guys who are if you're going through it you know exactly what i'm talking about i send you my love and i hope that one day sooner than later you can get yourself out of that situation um and I feel for you because I felt that <laughs> and I observed people too I mean there was people in this office that um that to me like just just being an empath and just feeling other people I mean I wouldn't I, I, I didn't talk to these people but I would walk by them and I could feel it like these people probably really 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 need this job and maybe if they had the chance to get out, they would. But because they need it for whatever reason, they're stuck there. <laughs> and it broke my heart because it was like, here I am sitting here thinking, well, if I don't want this job or if I don't like it, I could always leave. I don't have to be here. But not everybody is so lucky, right? Not everybody is so, doesn't, they don't have that ability to do that. So I understand now and I am so sympathetic to other people who are in situations that are different from mine because I get it. Um, so anyways, long story short, with all of that said, um, with my situation now, I'm still taking, I think I'm going to take maybe at least two weeks, we'll see, um, two weeks off of TCM. So I am still closing my shop starting tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 1st of August. I'm still closing my shop. I need a break. Um, I need to just, I want to just do me. Um, to be honest, now that I'm going to have the time again, because I'm only going to be working at the library, um, I really want to start getting my ass to the gym. I feel like <laughs> my husband was like, baby, to relieve stress, you should work out. And I was doing the opposite. I was eating um, because that's how I, that is how I associate my struggle, my stress. I eat. I, I am an emotional eater. Um, I am a cancer moon <laughs> and I eat right and I like to hide and, and be away from people so um, and it's a cancer moon in my second house my house of comforts so anyways um, <laughs> I want to do something for me and I started the spiritual book club on my Facebook group and I'm excited to start that it starts tomorrow I'm gonna you know start reading my stuff um and i just want to do me i want to you know yeah i want to push myself get my ass to the gym and, and at least get on a treadmill or whatever <laughs> i gotta start small <laughs> but i need to do me 
Um, and then I will open the Cackling Moon. My Cackling Moon shop will reopen. Um, and September will be here. And September and October is spooky readings. Like all of my Halloween theme readings will be in the shop. So I'm really excited for that. <sighs> I just need to have a little bit of time just for me to kind of decompress from this whole like little experience because um, it was a lesson for me to learn. And at the same time, it was it was a lot. It was um, my body was feeling it. And it was like I learned a lesson you know, and I got it. You got to trust your intuition. And it's like, how can I give my clients this advice in their readings when I'm not even following it myself? So that's why I feel like I'm not in the in the <laughs> mindset to be doing readings for anyone right now. Um, because I didn't listen to my own intuition. And I got myself in a situation that um, I'm not, you know, I'm <sighs> I'm not mad at I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not mad at my friend for getting me the job. I'm not mad I'm only mad at myself because from probably the first or second day after the second day for sure I was just like I don't know about this and I started to feel it and I didn't listen to myself. I just thought, okay, it'll get better. It'll go away. I have to do this. Money, money, money. And it was really my hunger for money that fueled me being uncomfortable and that pisses me off because money should not be the reason to be uncomfortable or to be um stressed out god you know and in uh, so many reasons why we're so stressed is because of money right money is not the answer and you would think that you would know that right now that i would think i would know that by now but of course i don't because all i'm thinking about is how bad i want my house <laughs> But this is definitely going to, you know, it's going to slow it down a little bit. My husband is so supportive. He He's so supportive. Thank God I have him in my life. But when you really, really want something, it's so easy to be, like, desperate, right? And if you're desperate for money, you're, you'll, you'll do whatever you can do. And it's like you won't listen to yourself and you won't listen to your body and your feelings and... Just because I was offered a do job doesn't mean I need to take it. And that's a message for you guys too. Just because you're offered a job doesn't mean you have to say yes. Um, because maybe it's not the right fit for you. And maybe something else better will come on later, you know? So anyways, this video is like 22 minutes and I was sitting here rambling. I'm going to head home. But I did stop at the peel box because a beautiful, lovely on my um, Facebook, I was, I'm in a Facebook group for um, tarot, like you sell and you, you sell and you trade tarot decks. And so I am in a Facebook group with this person and I actually bought their um, used copy of the Pagan Underworlds, no, not Underworld, <laughs> the Pagan Otherworlds Tarot. So I picked it up at the P.O. Box right now and um, I'm really excited for it. And they sent me a little baby crystal skull, which was so sweet. Let me see if I could get this out of this thing. It comes in this cute little like cloth bag like this. And then the Pagan Otherworlds Tarot is in here. It's in its box. There it is. Ah! So it is another deck that I am going to mark off my wish list. And I can't wait to cleanse it and just play with it. Um, but I guess it was like so weird how <laughs> I have a crazy day like I did today. And then I get the deck arrives in the mail. Like I got the notification that it was delivered. So I went to pick it up before the post office closed just in case they give me that little paper and it says you got to pick it up at the front desk. <laughs> so it's, it's ironic, right? You know, one thing closes one thing and then I get a deck in the mail. It's like, a, it's like Rose, just fucking read cards. <laughs> Rose, just work at the library and read cards. Like, please don't do anything else. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're not making a lot of money, but come on, just do what you do best. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for listening to me moan and groan and cry and be a cry face baby. But I love you guys, and I just felt like I needed to share that little message with you. And I hope you're having a beautiful day, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, loves.